excuse me, excuse me. Wagon people, welcome to another episode of the Just to Kick It is a Blessing podcast with your host Keith Tupa Gatiramu. Uh today's episode is sponsored by the Healthy Hub. Check them out on social media. They have lovely healthy products. Uh today's episode is a very special episode. We have a special guest in studio. Um and I'd love for you guys to meet him. Thank you. I'll let my guest introduce himself. My name is Andrew Numera Malisero. I play football. I think that's 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 all. What Tell else? us a bit about you. How old are you? Um I'm 20 years I'm 21 years old. Sorry, I got used. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, 21 years old. I'm from Malawi. But um I've been in Kenya too long. It's home now. So Yeah. That that that's nice to hear. So um before we go into your story, um I'd like you to tell us a bit about your shirt. I can see you're wearing a Numero Foundation shirt. So tell us a bit about that and what made you start that foundation? Um well, first things first, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um this this shirt it's um it's a Numero Foundation shirt. I have a foundation and it's mainly focused on athletes. So what we are trying to do is um I personally am an athlete and I understand the the challenges that athletes face on a day-to-day basis, I believe. So me thinking and coming up with a foundation like this is to simply help the athletes coming below me or even the ones that are ahead of me with things that maybe they don't know about the industry that maybe I know or maybe someone else knows. So we focus on mentorship, yeah, mentoring maybe the young athletes and we focus on um education. And when it comes to education, it's basically we can talk about school in general, we can talk about educating them about the industry they're in, we can talk about mental health education and that's the most important of all. Because uh, it takes a lot of strength for you to be able to keep going in this yeah. industry in my opinion. From what I've gone through, from what I've experienced, it's mental health that keeps you going it's not the talent it's not the hard working for you to even be disciplined you need to be mentally okay you cannot be disciplined if you're not mentally okay and I, i've tried uh, i played <laughs> football back in the days and <laughs> exactly i i can attest to yeah. you it's it's your mind that that yeah. keeps you going yeah. and because sports is something that some days you'll win some days you lose yeah. it's it's it about your mind you know yeah, exactly For me personally um I play golf and for golf I've seen it's your mind that literally keeps you going. Yeah. The thing that differentiates the good players from the great players the is their mindset. Yeah. And I think that's why people said Tiger Woods was probably one of the yeah. greatest players to ever bless the sport. Yeah. But enough about that. You know, tell us about your football journey. Yeah, just to finish um so for the foundation the third one is and also on the on that same point we partnered with a mental health organization the called Within and Without. Yeah. I've and heard of Within and exactly. Without. Shout out to them yeah, for the amazing to, work they're doing. <laughs> they're doing very great work and um this to basically just highlight that main point. And obviously I I don't have much to say about mental health but they do. So it's to bring in someone who knows what they're doing to help us in helping athletes. And the third one is community service. So a perfect example for community service is during this whole Ramadan period as a foundation we we were part of a group that managed to reach out to Muslim families that are lacking and helping them with like food hampers. Wow. Because there are a lot of people out there that that were breaking even their fast with nothing. Wow. Because even when it, they're fasting the whole day when it 6:30 comes they don't have anything to to break their fast with. So, oh, did he say you are again? Huh? <laughs> I'm twenty one. <laughs> so yeah, um basically That's amazing. but um and also we also helped a lot of um orphanages. Yeah. Um during this whole period and it's basically to just do as much as we can in helping the community. Yeah. And I would we would love to do more and it all comes um from the help that outside people are giving us. So thank you for everyone who's supporting us, everyone who has bought a shirt, everyone who has contributed something. It means a lot to us. Please and please guys, if out. you're listening to this and you haven't yeah. bought a shirt yet. Make sure it's you on buy. 800 it's bob. Starting, it's starting with him. Oh yeah, yeah okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I pledge after this, I will buy my shirt. <laughs> so definitely. So yeah. definitely my next photo you'll see me with the shirt. <laughs> and yes guys, please yeah. if you're listening to this, kindly buy your shirt. 
and support a family. You yeah. never know. It might be 800 for you, but it might be a long yeah. way for someone else. So yeah, tell us about your football journey. Um my football journey is interesting. It started when I was very very young. Yeah. I um, growing up in Malawi, we had different choices. You know people how people say like I grew up at the end of a choice. Yeah. For me, I believe everyone I grew up with we all had choices. And um when I was very young, I started playing football in the streets with my friends, barefoot playing on the streets, coming home with scars. And that is the route I decided to take. Some of my friends went into drugs. Yeah. Some of my friends, not really my friends, but a lot of people that even I played football at some point, they are now doing other things, yeah. you know. And that's when I look back to when my journey started, I thank those days because they really showed me everything, you know. Yeah. It was either that or a complete different life. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here sitting with you. I wouldn't have achieved anything I've achieved today. That's true. I wouldn't even be half the person I am today. So my football journey started in Malawi around maybe 4 years playing with my friends. I grew up like that, going to school in primary, I would play first thing you get there in the morning. Yeah, football. Gather some friends and play for money. You go, you go <laughs> into class and you're already dirty. That's why I I never even had a girlfriend in primary because <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, entering, uh, yeah. you're entering class. Do you have a just, girlfriend now? Yeah, no, I have a girlfriend. Ah, well done, well done. Yeah, well thank done. you very much. So, I don't have a ring yet, but I'm going. <laughs> but yeah, um, so my whole primary was like that. It was just football, football, football. I'd leave the house at six, come back at seven, and my mom would know I'm at football. Yeah. So um, my life changed when I was around in standard seven. I was around 11 years old at that time. So my school, just to give you a brief explanation in my class were around 70 people wow so you have 70 people in one class so if like if you're in year 7 standard 7 you have three year 7s st- standard 7a b and c and each of them was 70 people each of them people. have 70 people wow and when it comes to playing football we had two, three different teams yeah so you have a b and c different teams everyone was it, in the, was it based on classes or based on like strength or friends or you know, get myself because there were so many yeah. it had to be classes oh, they had to, to divide big. them like that yeah. but then like over you also had a school team yeah and then now you can imagine so like for example like under at that time under 15 we had from year 6 7 8 so and that's like 70 people exactly for three streams for three that's already 210 people <laughs> to make one team and then Yeah, that's a lot of people. And then um that's how my journey started basically. I was playing and I was doing well, you know. So a time a time came when in Malawi there was this one of a kind academy was launched in Malawi. Yeah. Everything was being done differently. And then they came to our school and said, "You know what? We're going to have a tournament now to scout people." Yeah. You know, so everyone was excited. We were playing I think it was like seven aside. So they had to choose 10 people to represent under 15. Out of three, out of like six classes. Yeah, out of many people, exactly. like probably more than three hundred. Exactly. People. So I made the ten. I made the ten, and then I went for the trials. We played. We played. We played. Maybe like three weekends. We we had to go there, and then play. We come back home, and no one heard anything. Maybe like after like two months, someone comes to our classroom and then goes, "Andrew, you have been called to the teacher's office." Yeah. My first instinct is I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, no, you know, no that, one exactly. Like called to the exactly. That's office. that's how things are. Like yeah. I, I'm not smart enough to be called <laughs> to the principal's office. So why why am I being called there? Yeah. So I found one guy who came from the secondary side yeah. and me. So yeah. we're sitting there. So they ask us, "Do you know why you're here?" I'm like, "No." And then they goes, "You two have been scouted to go to the academy." Wow. And it was only me from primary that was scouted to go to the academy and it was crazy because out of everyone you know yeah that's, and a, these guys, that's a huge number of exactly. people and these guys only had like 20 guys in the academy and then that's what, that's when my life changed because i started now seeing things differently i'm like this is now the path i'm supposed to take yeah and then when i go home i would do things differently you know so yeah and then a the funny thing i went i went to the academy first day the guy refused said bro you're not 11 years old <laughs> what do you mean if you <laughs> i'm telling you he asked me so to so me i'm thinking i'm going to turn it under 12 yeah he goes no bro 
You're not, you're not 11 years old. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I told him, bro. I didn't even have a passport at that time. I don't even know what I can do to make to convince this guy. Yeah. I told him, I'm 11. You can come to my house. Yeah. The guy says no. He put me in under 15. Wow. At 11 years old, he put me in under 15. <laughs> and then you're seeing everything is huge. <laughs> the first day, I'm seeing the, our, fir- our first game. Yeah. I, I went to the changing room. He goes, Andrew, you're playing. I told him, no, my stomach is hurting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I, told you, yeah? you, I sat outside. I watched the whole game. Yeah, and that's when, that's when my life changed basically. Because it was either I own up to it or I get out. That's true. And at that academy, we had everything. They would give you. They would give you fair. Wow. And for me, my whole life, when my mom gives me fair to go to school, I would work. So you save the money to have money for break or lunch. Exactly, but it it would go into football playing for money anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you football playing for money, yeah? Exactly, but uh. that was now like these guys are giving you transport, and my mom never knew. Yeah, because my mom, if I asked her mom, give me one fifty for transport, it would be crazy. Yeah, you know. So these guys, and then one day we played a tournament at two seven o'clock. I told the coach, I'm like, me, I can't go home today. Yeah. Because what am I going to tell my mom? What am I going to tell my dad? Yeah. This guy said, okay, you know what? You and I will go home. I will tell them. Wow. I told them, bad idea. My mom doesn't know I'm here. Yeah. You know, my mom doesn't know I'm here. Yeah. This is going to end up badly. And the the biggest thing was, this guy wasn't just a normal guy. Yeah. This guy had played for the Malawi national team. He was a captain for the Malawi national team. Oh. So to have his backing like that, it was even special. Yeah. He took me home that night. Before you continue, yeah. yeah, I just want to ask you one thing. So at that point of life, your parents were the keep to books parents, yeah. basically. Yeah. The ones who they don't care or they don't want to know what you're doing. It's yeah. grades, grades, grades. My mom my mom was a teacher at that time, so you can understand. Wow. <laughs> That's pressure. <laughs> exactly. That's pressure. And then um my brother, my 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 older brother, when he started playing football at a young age, he broke his leg. Wow. You know, so it's even to just leave the books and focus on football, your brother broke his leg. Yeah. It's that's a no goes on. But I decided to still try. And like this this night, this guy took me home and talked to my parents. My parents were like, no. This guy just sat there for ten minutes. I was like a special child. When going home, this guy dropped people, people, and then he dropped me last and entered my house. Yeah. And talked to my parents. And even my parents, something, even though they were still like a bit no, but I still understood that this kid, for this person, to who's this big, home. even in the Malawi football industry, to drop him home and try to convince us to let him play football, yeah. he, must be, he must be good. There must be something exactly. he sees. Exactly. So from now, from there, my mom told me, you focus on education. If, if you have to play football, you play just in case. Yeah. So I would go to school. I think we used to train around maybe like three times a week. So you, I would have to go to school, come back, go get the bus. I would connect like two buses. At that time, I'm like 12 years old. Connect two buses to go to training. At six o'clock, I was scared even coming from training, taking two buses again and going. And where I grew up, it wasn't like at, you can just walk at six o'clock and you're young. Yeah. I used to sprint from the markets to my house nonstop. Because I was scared. And they're fast, bro. Yeah, hey, bro, I'm telling you. <laughs> that mixed with dogs, you, you'll be shocked. <laughs> you'll be shocked. So, yeah, that's how my journey started. And then um, I played there for around two years. And um, I played I played with some amazing people. Most guys I played with there yeah. are now in the national team as well. So, um, after that, when I got to 13, um, my family had to move here. Part of my family had to move here. Yeah. So, we moved here. And that was a it was a change of environment. You know, you're coming from a place where if you speak English, you'll probably be slapped. And there you have to speak it every day. Yeah. You know, you're coming from a place. I didn't even know how to speak English when I came here. I barely spoke English. And then um, you have to change your whole life. Because I was used to... By the time I was coming here, I'm telling you, I'd only use maybe boots once. Barefoot. Your whole life. And then these are things that when you look back to, you even wonder, like, bro. And people ask me, bro, how many boots do you have? I told them, plenty. Yeah. Because I know how it feels to, to not have any boots. Oh, you're rich. No, I'm not rich. Just, but I have as many boots as I want because I know I felt to play with, with none. Yeah. And then 
when I came here, I went to Braeburn, change of scenario. From a government school, 70 guys in, in one class, 20 is the maximum you, you could have in Braeburn. Yeah. So to have a, a small class, everyone is friendly, is friendly. That was a change of my life. And I, for, I, I'm very grateful because I've lived both lives. Yeah. I know how it feels to not have anything. And I know how it feels to have something. Yeah. And that gives you a different perspective of life. So I went to Braeburn, I started playing football in Braeburn. And I think like my first week playing, you know, like a rondo and stuff like that together, like, hey, bro, this guy is dangerous. <laughs> but I'd, I'd come like halfway the time when football was, was being played. Yeah. I didn't play that season. But I guess I was like, hey, bro, this guy is dangerous. When the football term came, I It was remember, always term three, yeah? Term mm-hmm. one. It was term Just one term? for us. Yeah, oh. It was term one for us. I remember we used to have a teacher called Mr. Checky. Mr. Checky, you know, I don't know if you remember, but like, but I used to sell these power shoes, trainers. They were like green with like, a, I don't know how, like a, a triangle over there like this. It has, yeah, like, almost like Adidas. Sign. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I get that. So now me, these shoes, I was using them for games after school and everything. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, and I promise you. Yeah. The first ever game I was going to play against St. Christopher's for Braeburn. Yeah. I was walking into the bus with those shoes. And they were even torn in front. This guy stopped me at the bus. He goes, where are your boots? Told him, me, I'm using these. <laughs> the guy told me, I'm mad. He took me to his office. He gave me a pair of CTRs, yellow ones. He told me, why these? I wore those. That game, I banged like two goals. Yeah. He told me, bro, you're not giving me back those shoes? Tell your mom 3K, give me. <laughs> he told them to you by force. Huh? <laughs> he told them, bro, you, me, I'm not taking these boots back. Yeah. You take them, you go tell your mom 3K, you give me 3K. But like two weeks, I gave him 3K. I started using them. I played, I played, I played that term. End of term, me, me, I don't even know what I'm doing in assembly. They're saying, ah, best player of the, of the term, Andrew. Wow. The next, the next football term... Me and this guy called Brice, you know Brice? I know Brice, I know Brice. I think we were the only ones from year 9 or 10 to be moved to under 19. Yeah. We were playing under 19 and we were 10 years old. Me, I was, me, I was there already. I wouldn't have said that my stomach is hurting again. I was used to it. Yeah. And then we were even the ones shining in, the, in under, under 19. So this time you're how old? At this time, I think I was like 16. Yeah. In year 11, I should have been 16. In yeah. year 10, I should have been 16 around there. Yeah. Or 15, 16 around there. I don't remember. And it was just that. You're playing well, you're doing well, and everything is going well, you know. And then um, I finished Brayburn. I went to Brayside. Brayside, I, I was only there for a year. And um, we played under 17 there, and we won the league. Brayside, if you look at us on paper, we had people that were joking. Bro, Brayside training. We used to go there, we juggle the ball, we go home after school, they're done. <laughs> bro, I did, ah, bro, come, up, come show up for training. We yeah. go, no one, bro. We can even ask anyone. But that season, bro, we had like players that, that wanted it. But Brookhouse, to beat Brookhouse twice. Yeah. And you know Brookhouse at that at, not even like high was, school. Yeah, exactly. Brookhouse took sports very yeah, exactly. seriously. These are guys that have everything. And that's, if you look at our coach, bro, we used to be the coaches. Me, Jeremy, we used to be the coaches. Yeah. But we all wanted it. And then we ended up winning the league. And beaten. We scored like over like, I don't know how many goals. And then that's just how it started. And then, you know, you start believing in yourself more. When you, when you start doing these things, people think oh, I was just Brayside. It wasn't just Brayside. No one, no one knew what it meant to us. Yeah. Because, you know, you look at yourselves, you even you say, yeah, we believed. Yeah, we wanted to win this. But for you to actually win it, it's a whole different case. And everyone that went to Brayside, I'm telling you, ask them, what did it mean to you, bro, to beat Brookhouse twice? To beat all these schools. And it wasn't just, we go to a, to a tournament in Hill, um, Greenstead, we win it. Everything just came like that. But people think, ah, bro, that was just Greenstead. It was just. No, bro. I know. Like, also, me, like, back in the days, I've played football. Yeah. So I, kn- I know when you want something yeah. bad, you you have the chance yeah, exactly. to get it. Yeah. Like, even for us, I think when we won Ipsy League, I think we won Ipsy League two years in a row, yeah. Um, I remember we barely had training. Yeah. Yeah. And if you had training, it's the one for the coach would come and tell you, you guys, you know football, but you have no fitness. <laughs> so run laps. And you know, you're so frustrated yeah. and everything. So guys used to barely show up for training. But this was a group of individuals who came together to yeah. fight for, you know, one common goal. Yeah. You know, and so I can totally relate to what you're saying. Because yeah. people, 
we focus so much on the things that we cannot do. Yeah. You know? And I feel like there's so much like there's so much that 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 particular thing no one can tell me anything. You cannot tell me anything about how much it should mean to me. Yeah. Because I know what it took. There was a game, bro, like even if your leg is hurting, you can't stop. It, you because you understand like there's so many things that people can say, ah bro, but it's only this much. Yeah. I, or it's just a game. It's just a game. Yeah, I know. There's there's nothing like someone can tell me that can piss me off as much as that. Oh, it's just a game, yeah. Because for me, it can be more than a game. Yeah. My life can change in a game. That's so true. And you know, these are things that a lot of we let other people like determine the importance of something in our lives. And that's what you should never do. Because today some people like those one person that's like, bro, these days I play football and people say, "Bro, you don't even struggle." But I've struggled. You struggled. I remember there was a time back back in the uh, back when I was playing for Jaffries and I remember there was like I can't remember to which school it was but I remember it was an away game yeah, yeah. and I felt so bad that we lo- we lost and I think I'd missed a penalty <laughs> yeah so I remember on the bus back I was crying yeah. and everyone was just like yo what going with this guy that yeah, is exactly. crying you know but no one understood how yeah. deep you know that yeah. stuff meant to me you know People are like, ah, oh, it's just a game. Yeah. And you see, for me, like, I've really grown up with this competitive spirit. Yeah. I like winning. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you like winning as well, yeah. Yeah, I love winning. I'm telling you, there was a time. So, like, even when I was in Braeburn. Yeah. Braeburn, if you look at the trainings we, also, we used to have in Braeburn, and the training we used to have in Braeside, like they're two different things. Braeburn, we are training every Tuesday and Thursday. You're doing this, you're doing that. You're doing everything, you know. Yeah. But you're still not winning. And then you still go home. You know everything's fine, but then now when I'm there, me I'm shouting. People think I'm I'm psycho, because I can shout when I'm the woman I'm on the pitch. Yeah, I can shout, and then at the end of the day, I'm giving you a handshake. You think are you mad? Oh yeah, like it's not personal. It's not personal. Yeah, but it's then not it's personal. Just, I know. I you want to yeah, win, want to. and you know that you can win. Yeah. You know, so yeah, um, I went to Brayside. I won the league, and then I w- I wish I could have stayed for year thirteen. Yeah. I wish. I was there to stay for it because I was looking forward to finishing my my BTEC yeah. and everything but I couldn't. Yeah. It was I don't know I don't know if you remember I've never spoken to anyone about this but I don't know if you remember that trip we took to was it Kiambu? Yeah, Kiambu. Rising Stars. Yeah. We went there for a few days and that was when I was about to start my year 13. Yeah. I came home. I think it was like a Saturday or Sunday. I entered my mom's room. I told her, "Mom, I don't have uniform." She told me, "Sit down." My brother at that time was about to start year one. Yeah. She told me sit down. And she said, "You know what? I would love for you to finish at 13. But I don't have the money for you to finish at 13." Yeah. And your brother is just starting year one. You know, at that time even me like fine, I've never been a genius. Yeah. But I wanted to finish at 13. Yeah, I get what Because you know, I go I play football, I finish my at 13. That's what everyone is doing. But I was I told my mom, "You know what? I understand." when a tricky situation if i don't if it's not possible i will not i tried going to brayside asking for a scholarship it wasn't possible and then at that time i had a whole year now to to think about what i'm going to do what you wanted what can i do in this year you know cuz i cannot say ah i want to go do this do that i can't so i i said i'm going to focus on football i am really going to to focus on football and then when people ask me bro why are you not coming to like, bro I'm a, I'm a dropout you said as a joke because you don't want it to to really you don't want to show how how much it means to you you know yeah. the easiest thing you can say bro I'm a dropout I dropped out and then you said as a joke ah bro I wish I was you you know that year I took my time I focus on football I play football I play for I think that time was around 2018 and I'm telling you that that is the year that everything changed for me again you know because you think you're in a you're in a safe space yeah you take you get taken back what are you gonna do that year i worked i worked i worked if i show you my emails if i show you my messages to malawi yeah i messaged over 20 people telling them i'm i'm this player i want to play for the national team i want to play for the national team i want to play for the national team and before that i had i had gone to malawi twice to try for the under 17s and I didn't make it one one of the times I was late by like two days 
I entered the camp when they were traveling in like two days. I didn't make it. I came back. The second time, I didn't make it. I don't know what was the reason. I came back. Now this time, I messaged uh, maybe 20 people. I sent my videos at that time. I did everything. Now this is what they told me. You can come for the under 20. At that time, I was 18, 18, 17. Around 18, maybe 17, 18. I messaged them. They said, you can come for the under 20s. But you pay your own ticket. Yeah. If you make it, we'll refund you. It's a gamble. I was like, okay. I started with my mom. I told her. She was like, okay, you can go. But I'm telling you, me, I felt my mom telling me, okay, you can go. It wasn't easy. Yeah. You know, because I've already failed twice. True. Under 17, when I was 16. When I was 16. Now I'm 17, 18. And you're 10 for under 20. Under 20, two years older. Yeah. I remember I left. And then I went there. I got into camp. And then this is also another thing. Everything else changes. Because people think, because you're coming from Kenya, you have money. And even you, you yourself, you're living in Kenya. And you don't have money. Yeah. So there's already that that division into who you are and who you are as a person. Because where I came from, if I was to stay, maybe where I came from, if I was to stay there in Malawi, they would look at me differently. True. But because I had a different kind of change in my life, now they look at me differently in that division, yeah. which makes it harder to settle. I like, okay. Then I remember I trained, I trained, I trained very well. And then we had a trip to go to Zambia. At that time, it was only maybe like 20 guys. They took, a, they took a large squad because we were driving, we weren't flying. So yeah. obviously you're not spending a lot. So I remember we drove to Zambia. We we're playing a game. And then I'm starting. Wow. So obviously that shows you that you're doing something. I remember I started that game. Bro, and I'm, and I'm going to be honest with you. First five minutes, I scored. <laughs> you asked me how I scored that goal, I don't remember. You don't know. All I remember was the ball came to the top of the edge. I hit it. And the next thing I'm seeing the keeper is just like this, the ball went in. I didn't even know what to do. Yeah. And me, that's that's how important even God is in my life because that's a situation where I would never be able to understand. Why did I hit the ball there? Why did I hit it? How did I hit it? I know I don't know. Yeah. Play that game, we won that game. And that was the first time Malawi, even youth level, we beat Zambia in a long time, maybe ten years back. Wow. And then you start thinking about this. You start going forward. I've met the team. I remember we finished that game. We went back. Now we had Afcon qualifiers. We played against South Africa, home and away. I started both games. One, I played around maybe like 70 minutes. The other one, I played the full game yeah. back at home. We lost. I came back here. December, I think at that time, where was I playing? I don't even remember, but I wasn't even playing for a big team or anything. But it was just literally my, my discipline, my motivation, and my hard work that I could be able to enter a room and say, you know what, I play for the Malawi national team. Where do you play? Well, me, I played at Imbrayt, in Brayburn. You know? After that, I moved. I spent months, months, months. Maybe like three months later, I get another call up later. We have a tournament in Zambia. Come represent your country. I went back home. I played in the tournament. I come back. And then at that time, that's when now I was about to leave for the United States. Yeah. I got a scholarship, I was about to leave to go to the US. And then um, another another change. And you know, it's all because of awful. My, my traveling has been awful. I've never gone out with my family. I was just traveling for a holiday somewhere. I've never, all my traveling I've done is because of football. Yeah. There's no way in my passport you can show me say this you just go you just went with your parents. Just a holiday. Everything in my passport is football wise. Yeah. So um, at that time I was about to leave for the US, and I remember after December, I came back to Kenya maybe for like January and February. I left end of Feb to go to the US. Now obviously you are thinking, this is it, this is my break and everything. Yeah. Because at that time it made sense, you know. I do this, I do this, now this was what it was meant to be. Now I spent four years here, I look for something else. 
That was my plan. Even not even four years. I spent two years in uni. Yeah. I get an MLS club. Me, I'm sorted. You're sorted, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorted. I got there. My first thing, the the first thing they told you, like, oh, you can't kick a ball yet. You have to go through medicals. Wow. I'm like, sir, take me to the medicals. Me, I have nothing, bro. I go for my medicals. The doctor looks at me like my chest and everything. He goes, bro, your heart is not beating properly. What? I'm like, bro, what do you mean? Me, I play every day in Africa. And they tell me I can't play because my heart is beating. Bro, when did my heart, my heart be changed? You think it changed uh, in the plane? Me, I'm telling me I'm breathing normally. Yeah. He goes, no. We need to schedule you for for something called an EKG. It's like um, a heart test. Yeah. So I take that. And that took maybe like two weeks to just come. Then I had to tell you, ah, oh, you just have an irregular heartbeat. It's normal. Yeah. Right. Now I start playing. The first session, me, I'm killing it. I'm doing everything. Someone steps on my ankle, swollen. Wow. Bro, maybe like four days. I come back from that. My shins. My shins start hurting. I'm playing with it still. Yeah. And then the coach came to me one day. He goes, well... You cannot play this year. I'm like, but me, I've gone through enough already. Just just tell me you're joking. He goes, you cannot play this year. Why? <laughs> he goes, oh, because of like how um, I wasn't I wasn't in school. Yeah. Like for like a whole year. Yeah. I have to make up for it. So I, I do like one academic year without playing. Yeah. And then I start the second year. And I tell him, bro, you're joking. He goes, no, I'm serious. And then at that time, I'm doing so well in training. Yeah. And then that just goes out. Oh, you're not playing, meaning you are not even to be focused on. Because why would you focus on a player that is not playing the season? True. And, and initially your plan was to go there for two years exactly, and go. Exactly, exactly. So that means they were adding for you another year that yeah, you didn't think existed. Exactly. So now you, you think about it, you're like, oh my God. It was normal. Like, okay, fine, you know what? I'll have a year to improve and next year I'll come back stronger. But I'm telling you, my shins, I couldn't play 30 minutes without my leg, without my feet getting numb. Yeah. Bro, why? I go to the doctor first of all, he tells me, okay, let's schedule you for... An X-ray, my X-ray comes back normal. Go back, an MRI, my my MRI comes back normal. Bro, but I'm telling this guy, I cannot play. You're seen. Thirty minutes, bro, even less. I can't move. But how do you explain it? The MRI X-ray is coming back normal. <laughs> how do you explain that, bro? Yeah, that's crazy. They're gonna say, ah, you're just lazy. Ah, bro, from there now, I just became invisible to the coach. Nothing you do is right. And obviously that now that starts getting to you, you cannot do anything right. Even when you go to training, you don't want to be at training. You're just doing everything wrong. You just feel like you cannot do everything wrong. At that time, you're not playing. You're invisible to the coach and nothing you're doing is right. I was like, okay. I spent the whole summer there. I played, uh, I played for the same coach for the summer. And my scenes, my scenes. Sometimes there was a game I'm playing so well, maybe like 30 minutes. I sit down. Then the coach looks at me and goes, again? <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> what do you want me to do? You want me to cut my legs off, bro? Yeah. This guy said, again? And like in a pissed off way, goes and then calls someone else to come on. Yeah. And then for me, I didn't even know how to explain, but it was affecting me a lot. Because I know I'm feeling the pain. Yeah. But I don't know how to explain it to you. And you can't see it anywhere yeah, as well. Exactly. The MRI is coming back normal. The X-ray is coming back normal. How can you even explain that? I let it slide. And then um, after the summer, now the season started. Now that's when you you feel lonely because now that's when the team starts traveling. That's when they start playing a lot of games. And then you're just there. Yeah. You don't even feel like you're part of the team. And initially, you're a player who came there on scholarship. Exactly. So they expect you actually to give you a hundred. Exactly. Yeah. So now from there, because it eats you up a lot. You know, you don't have an, you don't have an explanation. And then um, I think it was like around November when I'm writing my final exam now, I was going to to apply for my next classes, you know, for the next trimester. And then they tell me, bro, you have a, you have a balance of $5,000. I'm like, hell no. After your final exam, you cannot stay on campus. Yeah. Because you have a balance, you don't have any classes. So you just be staying like as a nobody, basically. I am, yeah. I took that paper, I rushed to the office for the coach. I'm doing look at this. He goes, Yeah, that's it. You have five thousand balance. I'm like, how? Did you not put my scholarship? He goes, I did put a scholarship, but you're not playing. So you have five K to raise in two weeks. Wow. 
Less than two weeks, you have to raise 5K. Bro, I'm telling you, my whole life, I've never seen 5K dollars. That's a lot of money. That's a Bro, lot of money. And then you look at it, you're like, that's 500,000 Kenyan shillings. Even calling my mom right now and telling her you have to come up with 500,000 Kenyan shillings in two weeks is disrespectful. Yes, yeah, sure. Bro, I told this guy, I mean, I'll do anything. And he goes, bro, I gave you work experience. I mean, I gave you like work study. Work study was only giving me 200, maybe like $200 max a month. Yeah. How can you put, how, and that was like after like two months. How can you put $400 into 5K? Doesn't make sense. That is literally like putting, I don't know, top, like just putting like a cup into the ocean. What are you doing? You're not adding anything. <laughs> and then me, yeah, it, was, it was even like, man, I'm like, what am I going to do? So I called my mom. I told her the stranger. She goes, well, we'll see what we can do. Now from that time, when I have my, my final exam to do. Yeah. And if I fail, even if I stay, I can't play next year because I failed an exam. You failed, yeah. And those guys are very yeah, strict exactly. about the GPA. You can't, yeah, you can't. But um, it came, I finished my, my, uh, I finished my exam. I went to go see the, uh, the president for the school. I'm convinced he's a kind of racist, but... <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I went to see the guy, and that day I was leaving the next day. I went to see him, I told him the situation, he goes, well, when you get back home, send me an email. And at that time I was already breaking for like Christmas and stuff, so I'd have just gone home for holiday, you know? Yeah. He goes, when you get home, send me an email, and we'll look into it. Ah. I got back here, I flew on the se- on, like on the next day, Yeah. I came back home, I sent the guy an email, till today... I've never seen a reply. Wow. Till today. You know? And then I was like, ah, sour. Now you come back here and I came back in like... And did you send one or several? I sent him like maybe like three. I even told a friend of mine who's who's in the same uni to go speak to him. The guy went into his office, he spoke to him and said, I'll look into it. Wow. He never did anything. Like, sour. Now you're back to to square one. What do you do? You thought US was was your break. It wasn't... Come back in November, where do you start from? Another time, now I'm like 19. And I was like, you know what? If there's anything I can do is play football. Yeah. I started playing football, I started playing football, I started playing football. That was in 2019. And then um, in 2020, mm-hmm. I started playing for a Division One club, you know. Over there playing, I played maybe the first game, I scored. The second game, you know, you're playing well and everything, and teams start noticing you. And then I think that's when COVID started. Yeah. Yeah, and then COVID started after that, and I wasn't playing. And then uh, after that, and then I, I got a phone call. I think it was like a Friday or a Thursday. Tomorrow I'm leaving for Kericho. You know, there's nothing to do. I want to go to Kericho with my girlfriend and, you know, just go relax. Because of everything, yeah. For me, it was even like too much at that point. Yeah, I'm trying my best to stay strong, but it, it gets to you. It, it does. You don't understand. And then, um, yeah, I get a phone call. He goes, like, are you in Nairobi? I'm like, yeah, I'm in Nairobi. What are you doing? Nothing. He goes, ah, bro, we have this connect with Gorma here, and they're, they're willing to sign you. Wow. So me, I think about it. I'm like, hey, bro, now you're made to come from here to go there. How does that work? Yeah, but at the end of the day, I'm like, hey, that's an opportunity. I'm going to stay. Plus, you used to being from here and playing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Since so, you're yeah, young, yeah, from, be, ele- from the time you're 11. Yeah, you're 11, yeah. You start, you start getting used to it and like going beyond what you expect, you know. So I remember going to the chairman's office, talking to him and everything. And uh, everything was fine. I think that was the first day I came home. The second day... They offered me a contract. And then I think on the third day, that's when I was signing. Yeah. You know? And this is funny because my, my whole life, bro, I can, I can count to you, the people. I can tell that they're my friends. But from that day, even I was even reading posts on Facebook. I said, hey, bro, me, I've played with this kid and it's so good. I've never seen you. <laughs> I've never seen you. You've never seen him, huh? I've never seen you. I've never spoken to you. But you're here speaking about me. Yeah. Ah, bro, me, this kid, hey, bro, hey, 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 hey. And that even adds some pressure. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather, I do it, he stays on the download, let me go. Yeah. 
ah bro everywhere everyone is speaking everyone is talking now that's when love starts coming in but when i was struggling no one said anything they usually say they only love you and you're up huh? yeah exactly remember i'm telling you that day everyone is texting me even people you wouldn't believe yeah bro, everyone is texting me. even those girls that never wanted to date you back when yeah, you're yeah. you a footballer bro primary bro i'm telling you if i went back to malawi right now ah way it'd be different <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so uh, i signed for gore and then that was now the beginning you know it starts it'd be like ah, maybe everything had to fail mm-hmm. so now this starts working you know so yeah that started going that started going for like maybe like six months six months you are i was i would say i was part of gore because if you look at the situation i'm in the papers but where is your game time it's not there for what reason for no reason and I, i'm not going to speak obviously i'm not going to speak any bad or anything like that because yeah. some people might have to say differently but for me i was doing my best i was doing everything i can and i deserved to play but i didn't maybe some people thought differently and i respect it yeah i only played one game it was a cup champions league game over here in kenya in nairobi at nyayo and i played well you know you play well and you expect to play but i didn't and then um it just got a bit difficult to handle you know and uh because there was no reason for me to not play and then it it starts now attacking you personally is it me am i doing everything wrong and am i not good enough you know you start doubting yourself and everything and this is how saying mental health comes into play in a different in a diff, in, in a very very vital way it's very powerful Because you you can show up at training but not be there true because you're obligated to show up at training yeah. but if you if you're mentally not there you will never be there bro i'm telling you look at the situation and pray to god that i want to leave you know not that I have anything bad to do with this to uh, to do with anyone yeah but because of the situation it doesn't favor me in any way and for for those who don't know Gorma is a very big team it's a very it's big probably club. the biggest team in Kenya yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah so for and, you um, to get signed to it and want yeah. to leave yeah exactly it must have been really tough on it you it was it was tough for me you know yeah but obviously i don't i don't like burning bridges yeah but a lot of a lot happened in the process in the situation yeah that i was praying to god that i want to leave yeah no i want to leave saying you know i don't want to leave and even i don't want to leave a minute too late because now that one i'll just stop yeah i'll just shut off completely and then one day some 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 things happened that i will never speak about and then one day you just out of nowhere they just tell you go see the ceo okay go to the ceo the guy goes well well before this i talked to the coach i'm like you know what he was like i maybe we'll send you on loan okay i just want to play football i'm 20 yeah. years old i just want to play football the next day you go to the ceo he tells you well well since we have both agreed that you want your release letters <laughs> bye we call it here and then this is how i knew that the god i serve bro yeah. answers prayers because maybe maybe someone back there thought that you know what let's kill this child yeah or let's stop this kid or maybe for whatever reason maybe this kid is not good enough which i believe is not true and then one day they bro do you know how long my contract was how long four years jeez <laughs> that's crazy four and i even remember when i asked you when you're signing a contract how long is your contract yeah, four years cuz for me i see like kenyan teams sometimes they tend to hold yeah. young players you know and there's a story about some guy i won't mention because you know yeah. he he had an opportunity to go to a club out of the country yeah. and the people here refused you know but because you have a contract there's nothing you can, nothing do. You can do and they gave the other club outside the country a silly clause and the club said we don't think he's this much value yeah. so we don't see the point of signing him you know yeah. and i think from that on like they kind of hit his career big yeah. down you know which is Bro. so dangerous yeah. four years 
and you're playing, it's fine. Yeah. Four years, you're playing for the biggest club. That is perfect. During this time, I got, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got called to the national team, to the main national team, senior team. And I know for sure it wouldn't have happened if I was playing in Division One. Yeah, true. I'm not saying this club was the reason I got called up. I take responsibility for that. I got called up because the coach knows me. Yeah. Because of my abilities. Yeah. But because I was linked to this team. Yeah. This is when I was called. And I, then. Yeah. I also noticed something. It's like national teams, especially like Kenya and what, it's like they tend to look at the club that someone plays for before they call him to the main team. But, you know, it's, Have you noticed yeah, that? It's important because sometimes even then, you explaining it, let's say you're, you're a coach for the Kenya national team. Yeah. You explaining why you are picking someone from Division Two yeah. and you're leaving someone who's playing in KPL. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Even but, even if you're just as good, yeah. Explaining it is difficult. That's true. So what even what even the coach told me straight up was I've been meaning to call you, but explaining where you're playing, playing. is difficult. That's true. Makes sense. You know? And that's what I'm saying, like because I was linked to God, I got the opportunity. To play for the national But team. the reason I was called was not the name Kormaya. It yeah. was because of my abilities, because of what the coach saw in me. He told me. He called me. But that was just the opportunity they gave me, the chance they gave me. And I can say from now on, as if you ever see a Malawian in Gormahia, I was the first Malawian to play for God. True. Maybe not KPL, but I was the first player to play for God. Yeah. Officially. That's history. And as you walk, you start, you start seeing these small things and you start taking it as you go. Bro, I've been, I was in a very, very bad state because you fail to understand, you know. You pray for something and then when it comes, what am I going to do now? What next? Because the same people that are saying this kid is good are going to say this kid couldn't hack. <laughs> yeah, it's true. When you up the love, when you come down. People, people these days speak because they want to speak. But if you look at half the stories that are being shared these days, if you look at the facts, it will never be the same way. Because some people just want to destroy your reputation. And some people want to prove that, bro, this kid was never good. Yeah. But they can't say it when, they, when you're doing well. And you know, the thing is, what I realized, and I think I even mentioned it in last week's podcast, was, you know, the power of the tongue. You know, mm. in one of, you read the Bible a lot, and I'll get to that later on in the conversation. But one of the verses in the Bible says, the power of the tongue, you know, the tongue has the power yeah. to destroy or create. Okay, so, yeah. you know, use it wisely. And I feel like, especially with social media, because now you can directly reach to someone. Yeah. It's we need to be careful what we say Very about someone, careful. you know, because one sentence, one word yeah. can destroy someone's life forever. See, back in the days, only, you know, people close to you yeah. could tell you something. Yeah. But nowadays, someone thousands of, mile, thousands of miles away can, you know, tell you something and yeah. it changes your life forever. There's this quote that says, keep your words soft and sweet. Yeah. In case you have to eat them one day. Wow. And that is the truth, bro. Because these days people speak when they want something to to favor them in a way. Yeah. I have a lot of people in my in my DMs that that praise me, you know, when they see me doing well. But I know it's the same people that go behind my back and say he couldn't he couldn't play at goal. But no one knows my story. No one knows where he left. People these days, they even come to me and tell me, bro, you have it. You have it well, bro. Me, I tell them, yeah. Bro, you've never struggled, bro. I tell them, you don't know my story. And I'm not the kind of person that's going to sit here, bro, and tell you, man, I'm going to say my story. I don't want you to ever say I'm soft or anything like that. Because I don't yeah. have the time. And if there's even any time that I've said my full story is here. Yeah, I know. And because I'm, we're very happy I to share your story with us. I don't... I don't want PZ, bro. Every single door I've walked into, I've deservedly walked into it. There's no one that can say that, Andrew, you got this and you didn't deserve it. Yeah. If there's that one person that can say that, text me. You reach out to us, man. Reach out to me. Andrew Numero 48 on Instagram. Because every single thing I've achieved till today, 
I've worked for it. There's nothing that someone can say that Andrew got this and he didn't deserve it. Everything. Everything. And I uh, I played at Gora. I, I left. And for me, my, my, every, like my scare was, if it breaks out, now people are going to speak. I did it my Instagram for like a day. Yeah. And I was like, ah, what's the point? It already happened. If people, the people that are around me, the people that know, no. I think also one thing social media has done for us is we tend to even let people who, we let people who we don't know exactly have opinion of us yeah. that matter even more than people yeah. we know, you know. And I think for me, for like so long before I started this podcast, it's the same thing. Mm. You know, I was like, now what will this person say? You know, what will this person say? Yeah. What will this person say? You know, if I say this, will this person ever invite me for anything? Mm. You know, but at the end of the day, like they probably don't care. Yeah. You know, we're probably caring about people who would not even come to our funerals, you know? Yeah, exactly. And at the end of the day, the one thing I learned is at the end of the day, at the deathbed, you won't say, oh, I couldn't do this because of this, or I didn't do this. It's you. You'll sit there and say, Andrew, I could have done this. Yeah. Why didn't I do it? You know? So, like, for me, even, like, these days, what I do is I tend to stop as much as I can letting people's opinions control my life. It's important because, you know, like, I realized every single thing that I have achieved in my life I've done it basically with people that care about me and I care about them yeah you know so why should I delete my Instagram for someone who if I look at my success I can't even pinpoint one thing they have helped me with it's true it changes it changes I'm not gonna say like it doesn't affect you still it does but it gives you a bigger picture on moving forward. If I show you my circle today, bro, you'll be shocked. You'll be very, very shocked. A lot of people know Numero. A lot of people talk about Numero. But now they think even I'm ignorant if I don't reply. But it's because I know. Bro, there's some people that I know straight to my face. They show so much love. But behind me, there's so much even that they don't show the hatred they don't want you to, they don't want to see you win and i'm in the industry that it can make you or break you yes sir so if you take their love you're also gonna have to take the hate wow you know yeah and when, once you start walking bro like once you start walking on your own there's this quote i saw like if you really want to see your true friends lose your job <laughs> lose your job and it's funny because these things kind of like, we, we say them as a joke, you know. Yeah. But it's true. Not everyone that is there when you're winning is going to be there when you're losing. And I don't, I don't want to set like standards for friendships. But everything should have a purpose. You in your life, you have a purpose. So why shouldn't your friendship with someone have a purpose? People say he's only using you. He's supposed to use you, but is he using you in a good way? Yeah. Some people, some people come to you too, but they say, "I want to use you in my in my in my business." That's that. Why would you mind being used in a business? But if someone is using you for a different purpose, there's no point. And I think what you've said is, at the end of the day, to some extent, we're all like using each other. Yeah. It's just, does it align with my purpose? Exactly. Is what I'm doing with this person aligning in my purpose? Exactly. Because as much as even if we're true friends, yeah. if I call you to go out, I'm using you exactly. to go out with me to is it helping you? kind of, you know, create that vibe or that good time. Yeah. So the question I should be asking, yeah. is it aligning with my purpose? Exactly. I've never looked at things like that, but you've really opened my mind to if I, play, I see things. If I play football, yeah. you're a football agent. Yeah. You want to be rich. Yeah. I want to be a footballer. Ball. The way you're going to make money is using me. True. The way I'm going to make money is using, using you. Yeah. If you get me a club, I'll pay you. Yeah. If you get me a club, it will pay me and I'll pay you. 
Yeah. We're using each other. What what's wrong with that? People like to think about it like, oh, because he's using you. No. We are supposed to use each other. But how are you using each other? That's the biggest question. Because these days I'm going I'm, I'm I'm sorry to say this, but we are we are leading each other the wrong way. I have a lot of friends that play football. Yeah. But they don't live their lives as people that want to play football. There's some people that I even look at them and I'm confused. Yeah. But I'm not going to ask you because you and I you know, maybe we can play football together, but I'm not in the place to ask you that. Yeah. The question is supposed to come from someone that is close to you. But the question is, if you want to be whatever you want to be, how are you living your life? You cannot live two lives. And I always say this. You cannot live two lives. That's number one. Number two, the people that are in your life, God is going to use them, whether you like it or not. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Jesus sat with Judas every single day eating with each other. And God used Judas to fulfill Jesus story. You might say, "Ah, bro, if I have this bad friend, God is not going to use a bad friend." No. He's going to use a bad friend but in a bad way. Yeah. So how you live your life, who you live with your life, who you live in your life with, it all matters. There's no point in your life you can say that, "Bro, I'm only doing this for a while and it, with no consequences I'll go." Yeah. You cannot say I want to be a footballer but in a few years let me enjoy my years. It's now never. I've lived my life football wise 24/7. But today if you ask me have you done everything you can do to, for a footballer I'll tell you no. At 15 I'd have done some things differently. At 11 I'd have done some things differently if only I knew. Cuz people say I have time. You don't have time. You might be 11 years old and live to 60 years. But if you say that you have time thinking you have 49 years, you don't. You have today. And who you hang out today, what you do today. And there's this person that g- gave me this example, told me if you take this advice it will it will help you. 10 10 10. What I do today, how is it going to affect my 10 my 10 seconds? My 10 minutes. Maybe my 10 hours. My 10, 10 days, yeah, 10 days, 10 months. How is it going to affect 10 me? Years. So if you're thinking about things in 10 seconds, well, you're going to say I have 69 years to live. This this world is changing, and a lot of I I see a lot of youth and it it hurts me because there's so many things that can be done right. I'm not saying if you're a person that clubs, you're doing something lo- something wrong. You can do it. Yeah. But does it align with your purpose? That's a question, bro. Makes sense, makes sense. Um I wanted to ask you a question, yeah. Um how's it, you're very big on religion. I constantly see you reading the the Bible on your social media and what. Tell me a bit about that. Okay, so for me I believe I can even see the cross on your neck. Yeah. I believe I believe in God. Yeah. That's the most important thing for me in my life because of the person it has raised me to be. I've done a lot of things wrong. I would never refuse. But it has made me the person that can sit here and admit to you that I've done a lot of things wrong. That's true. And wants to be a better person. Because people think the Bible is I mean the being someone who believes in God is just about reading the Bible. It's about who you are. You know? And it doesn't mean that you don't make mistakes. You do make mistakes. No, it's perfect. Je- exactly. Jesus worked with people that were doing bad things to the point he was even being asked, "Are you sure you want to work with this person? You are doing this." And then he says, "No. I'm here for those people that are that are doing wrong. Because a doctor doesn't go to heal someone who's not who's not sick." <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, when I think about my faith, bro, my faith has made me walk into rooms that nothing would have given me enough strength to walk into it. Now for sure when you say a story I can totally see it. Yeah. Even my mom is the same. Yeah. Bro, if, if my mom sat here and told you a story you would you would be shocked. Maybe one day we can have a yeah. This is what this podcast yeah. is about. Bro, Sharing stories that will change lives. Growing up, growing up my mom we we used to stay nine people in a two bedroom house. Nine people in a two bedroom house. And there's not If not even a single day my mom has made as ever made us feel poor. 
You know why? Because you told us to believe that we're going to be better one day. Until today, we're in a better place. But she still makes us believe that, Andrew, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve. Yeah. If you pray. Because, like, if you believe, if I believe that God can do this for me, and God has opened so many doors, so many doors, so many doors, and then you look at the Bible, you read the Bible, you read about Job, who suffered for no reason, and then ended, ended up being given even double of what he had. What he asked for. You understand that there's joy after the suffering. And bro, for me, my suffering, I would never curse you for it. I would never curse you for it. I might, I might hurt, but at the end of the day, I have to be, I have to be aligned to what the Bible tells me. And it gives me strength. It, it makes you, like, it makes you understand why you don't have to understand it. When I look at it, like the story you shared with me today, yeah. um, I can see it because I'm sure when you, when your mom told you you couldn't go back to BTEC, you know, you felt broken and everything. Yeah. But then when you look at it, if you went to BTEC, you'd have probably gone straight to university. Exactly. Probably done physics or something. Yeah. And no, no, never physics. had the chance. <laughs> not physics. No, no, no. I'm just yeah, giving an yeah, example. Yeah. Nothing, nothing yeah. against guys who do physics or what. But you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're They're saying. probably done physics. Never yeah. played for the Malawi national team. Yeah. Never been the first Malawian to play yeah. for Kormaya. And how do, you, how do you explain that? You can't. You see. And <laughs> for me, like, I'm not, I believe in God. I'm not as strong as you. Yeah. But even for me, the days I wake up and I say, this is only God. Yeah. Like, you know, things that happen in your life and you have no explanation to yeah. You know, and you say, for real, this is only God, you know. Bro, I'm not going to say his name, but there was a time someone messaged me and told me, bro, me, I want to do this. I want to achieve, I want to do this, but my dad doesn't want me to do it. Yeah. Could you put me in your prayers? Because there's a month I was fasting, I was praying, and I was putting this person in my prayers. He messaged me two months later, told me, bro, my dad has accepted. Wow. I didn't tell him what I was doing. Yeah. I didn't tell him what I did. Yeah. But the fact that this guy stood out and said, can you put me in your prayers? Wow. That changed everything to me. Maybe it might not be the same with him or his dad. Maybe his dad had a different reason. Yeah. But that's how God works. For me, if I tell you like all the doors God closed in my life, for no reason, you'd be shocked. Now I play 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 90 minutes without my shins hurting. Yeah. You know why? Because if I finish three years in uni, right now I'd still be in uni. I would have never said I played for the Malay national team. Yeah. And I said I played for Gorma here. Yeah. I wouldn't be here where I am. Numeral for natural would never exist. So to even back it down a bit, if I never knew God, but I don't even think I would have ever scored that goal against Zambia. I would have never even made it to under 20. True. If it wasn't for my mom's faith, she would have never bought a third ticket to back to Malawi. Yeah. Big shout out to your mom. Man. And all this happened because we put God as the person that is going to handle it. Maybe someone might not see it the same way I do. But for me and everything that has happened in my life, I say it has happened because I let God do it. That's true. Even even for me, I look at some yeah. things and I definitely know it's not me. You know, like even how I got this opportunity to record at this studio. It's definitely just someone reached out to me and was like, yeah. Yeah, I think you should reach out to these guys. Yeah. They do. And look where we are today. You know yourself, it's not me. And that you can't take credit you because even if you take, yeah. take credit for it, it won't even make sense to anyone. Yeah. Opportunity is there. It's, yeah. But after that, you can't take credit. Anyways, as we come to the end of this, I want to ask you three questions. For people out there, how did you convince your parents? Or, you know, for kids who, you know, I think these days people want to be more artistic, more athletic and everything. How, how do you convince your parents? Or how did you convince your parents? You know, for me, people think I'm lying when I say this, but I didn't wait till I could convince my parents. At the age of 11... I was walking to school and we would walk through the forest, bro. Yeah. Because you don't want to, because when you walk on the road, it was a bit far and your mom can see you. Yeah. We'd walk inside the forest to school to save money to go for training in the afternoon. Yeah. 
when I got here to Kenya was because my mom wanted me to to stop football. A different environment, this guy's going to stop football, you focus on something else. But I stuck to it. Yeah. And you know this is the reason like I gave my mom a reason to to not say no. Cuz like if you're seeing a child, you're refusing to do something and he says, "No, this is what I want to do." Yeah. I'm very good at it and this is what I want to do. And every single thing you are doing is showing your mom, your dad, that this is something that you want to do. At some point they're gonna they're gonna say, you know what? Let's see how far you'll get to this. Give him a chance. Because people think it's just about saying, Mom, I want to be a footballer. But what are you doing to be a footballer? And you're staying at home, probably sleeping the whole day. Yeah, bro, my mom my mom even me asking my mom, Mom, please buy me boots. She wouldn't she didn't even afford boots. But I didn't stop. I went to play barefoot. I brought some for my friends. Because people think just because like your mom is saying no, maybe even it can even be different reasons. But if you really if you're really committed, you can convince your parents to do anything, bro. If they're seeing the child is taking training seriously. Yeah. And it also aligns you with every other thing. My my football aligned me with education. I didn't I'm not an Esther student, but it aligned me to, to the best of my abilities to do well in, edu- in education because of my football. Why should my why should my mom say no? But I'm telling you, me I failed biology. That's why I said no physics, no science. I failed <laughs> biology. No, but I, I get what but, you're saying. Yeah. I think even in um I previously asked a similar question to Kwame yeah. and what he said was have a plan. Show you want something and be committed to it, you know. Don't say you want to play football and but your excuse for not playing is your shoes are torn. Yeah. You know. But I'm telling like you, you, you said play barefoot. Yeah, but I'm telling you I feel like you can convince your parents anything you want. But people kids these days they sneak out of the house. If you show that commitment to your football. Yeah. <laughs> True. Your parents should never You're going to convince them at some point. Yeah. Because if you sneak out so much, your parents are going to be like, you know what, we're tired. Just go to the front door. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. But if you're committed to your football, yeah. why are they going to keep saying no? Yeah. If you think this kid is committed, he's doing well, disciplined, everything. So Next just... question. Um, What is advice you'd give to a younger you? My younger me would just be... Get out there, yeah. You know, get out there and express yourself. Cause you know, so I feel like a lot of times I would be in a situation where, like, if people mark me as this, I'd be like, okay, man, it's fine. Just mark me as that. It's okay. But like, if I was to express myself more, maybe I'd have done some things differently. And what's that? What's the advice you'd give an older you? To be strong mentally. Yeah. To be strong mentally. To always, to always, always see the bigger picture. Okay. Any last party shots? Any last closing statements? Um, to anyone and everyone who has watched this far, I say thank you. And um, for me, my words are short, bro, to be honest. I don't like to speak too much. But it's just circumstances don't make a person. You know, circumstances don't make a person. What you've been through what you've gone through what you're going through doesn't define who you're going to be and everyone around you has a story that can make you stick to your purpose yeah cuz that is very very important because people say i couldn't do this because of this if you really want to do something no matter what is going on in your life you'll find a way you find a way and you look back and you say because of this is there an am who I, who I am today and my favorite saying is planted not buried and if you cannot understand that you're too young uh, Can yeah you? yeah i do <laughs> thank you so much thank for you. coming and sharing your story thank you for um me, we really appreciate it we look forward to having you soon and we wish you all the best in your career man thank, thank you. you very much bro for those who have gotten this far thank you so much um just a quick reminder again that This episode is sponsored by the Healthy Hub. So have a look at them and I hope you've gotten a chance to learn something. See you next week.